bicycle safety in Toronto. Let's talk about it on Gold Hawk Live. A recent survey shows that Toronto has 214 kilometers of on-street bicycle facilities, both shared and dedicated cycle lanes. It sounds good, better than Montreal at 180 or Vancouver at 106, but blown out of the water by European cities. Berlin, for example, has more than a thousand kilometers of shared and dedicated bicycle lanes. How do you ride your bike anyway? Just on the trails far away from traffic? Or do you use the bicycle lanes where you can and take your chances on other streets when you need to? Do you use your bike to commute to work? Not many do. Or is it purely for recreational activities? Whatever your cycling habits, here is our question. Is Toronto safe for cycling? My guest tonight, Adrian Heaps, is here, Toronto City Councilor, Ward 35, Scarborough Southwest and he is chair of the Toronto Cycling Committee. Fred Stabinski is here, and he's project coordinator at the Toronto Coalition for Active Transportation. Evelyn Sedin is here as well, and she's promotions director for the Toronto Bicycle Network. And Margaret Hastings James is also here, and she's sponsorship coordinator at the Friends of the Greenbelt Foundation, in particular the Tour de Greenbelt. I hope I said that properly. Tour de Greenbelt. Okay. Thank you all very much for coming in. Great to be very here. Very nice to see you all. Let me get you to answer the question we'll be asking of all the viewers who call in tonight. Is Toronto safe for cycling? How yes. do you answer it? Yeah, I, I do think it's safe for cycling. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be out there myself. Uh, the question is, I think, can it be safer? And definitely uh, it can, and that's going to be by virtue of building up a proper network of, of bike lanes. Fred, how would you answer that question yourself? Yeah, I'd agree. Toronto is safe for cycling. Uh, I think there might be areas of the city or certain road users that increase the yeah. risk, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, but in general, it is safe. Um, skills that people have to ride on the road, uh, sharing the road safely, uh, and respecting other road users, that all contributes to Are a there safe other cities that you would be less likely to ride a bicycle in that you would consider to be not as safe for bicycles? Uh, Offhand? Sure, there are cities uh, in the in the uh, Midwest, uh, such as uh, Winnipeg, uh, mm -hmm. Saskatoon, um, even Edmonton, where they're lagging behind on infrastructure. And so I think uh, where we have dedicated infrastructure like bike lanes, that's yeah. where people generally feel safer. Okay. Evelyn, how would you answer that question? Yourself? I would say cycling in Toronto is safe if you know what you're doing. Well, that's there's a very large qualifier, isn't Yes, it? You, there's a lot of traffic. <laughs> and if the drivers know what they're doing, too, I suspect, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. Okay. Uh, respect for the road for both uh, cyclists and motorists, as well as um, being aware of your surroundings, like car doors yeah. opening, for example. Getting the, doored, as they the say. The streetcar railings, you know, you yeah. go in on those on a, uh, on straight on, you're going to get in there and heads over heels. Yeah. So um, being aware of where you're cycling and, and, and how to cycle properly. <clears throat> yeah, um, okay. Increases. Margaret, how would you answer that question yourself? Um, I too would agree that Toronto is a safe city for cycling. Um, I'm, I'm leaning towards Evelyn's uh, uh, thoughts that it really does require a bit of education and experience um, on the on busy city streets that are shared yeah. use. So, aren't you the one? And I'm just checking my files, you, both in my brain and all, aren't you the one that has had a couple of. Uh, fairly I, I uh, serious had, mishaps? Yes, I have had a couple of collisions. One in particular uh, was fairly traumatizing where I was struck by a commercial vehicle, a pretty large size um, truck. Was, is that a turning situation? Uh, it was. The truck uh, took a right-hand turn. Uh, and, basically, and you were right there. Yeah, I was there and I was doing what I now know is a common error for mm -hmm. cyclists and I was squeezing up against the inside of the curb yeah. and th where the truck turned without a signal or anything. So, so he was you should actually, have been back a little from I should that have been. It's not, it's not illegal, my placement, but with experience yeah. and education, 
Like I now know that's somewhere okay. you never want to be as a and cyclist. And tell us about the other one. The other one was more of a head-on situation? Um, yeah, I was struck by wow. a Jeep. Um, it was it was fairly slow. I uh, In a residential street, um, a stop sign that was, yeah. I guess, overlooked. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, it's too many. All right. Yeah, okay. and yeah. It, it was a nighttime yeah. situation, and I actually didn't yeah. have a light. So I yeah. know, uh, you know, a little. Now light. you do. Yeah, lights are very okay. important as well. I've learned again the hard way, but these are things that you know you don't have to learn the hard way. There's there's um, education mm -hmm. systems in place, programs like Can Bike, yeah. um, other you know ways you can learn. Okay. There's all kinds of helpful tips on the well, internet. Well, and we're going to get into some of that yeah. and go along yeah. because that's yeah. very much part of a discussion of safety. You were busting to say something a minute ago, so I'm coming back to you. I don't know, I was just trying to better my accident with Margaret, but that's pretty good. <laughs> okay, but, well, uh, let me hear yours, no, and then I'll uh, tell you mine. No, come back, come on. No, I just, I, I think we've all had wipeouts and, uh, <laughs> and, and problems, and... Uh, mine was totally my, my own fault, yeah. though, so... Well, I don't want to get to, you know, but I think, I think the, the, <laughs> the main point is, is that, uh, you know, cycling in Toronto is, is making a transition. It used to be really just a form of recreation, and now yeah. it's a form of transportation, and we haven't yet built in... Yeah, but those statistics are so pretty slim, aren't they? What is it? Uh, a 4% commute to work by bike in the central part of Toronto. Well, 4%, that's true, but yeah. uh, uh, most, <coughs> most people don't actually <coughs> want to just commute to work. They're looking for ways to actually change their other modes of transportation like they do in Europe. Most people in Europe, are, the average ride is about four to seven kilometers where they actually, what's called intermodal transportation. Well, we ride do to some a train of that here. We do, we but do we that don't with some buses, and yeah. we're going to have more of those Bicycle racks Biker. on the front? Yeah. Do you guys use, have you, have you used those bicycle racks mm -hmm. on the bus? I have used you have? it, yeah. It's very simple to use. Um, you just plunk it in, yeah, right? Yeah, you basically mm -hmm. just hoist your bike up and lift. There's an arm that goes over the front wheel. Yeah. and um, Each rack takes two bikes, I think, two right? Two bikes, yes. yeah. yeah. Uh, it just takes a minute to do it, and then you just get on the bus and go. Now, I read somewhere, although I've never experienced this exactly, if the, if the rack is full and it's not rush hour, uh, you can ask the driver if you can bring the bus on board if the bus isn't crowded. Can you do that? Uh, that's up to personal that, discretion of, that's of, of the driver. That's written down, I know. Yeah. I don't know how often that actually happens. Uh, but, uh, I've never seen, personally, actually a uh, bicycle taken onto a bus, but I think it would really be up to the, the discretion of the driver and it have to be certainly uh, off-peak hours. Well, it's, and it would have to be, a, a, there's a safety consideration mm -hmm. there as well that you can't can't cram a bike on if the uh, have you ever done that yeah off peak you can take uh, you sure. can take a, on the a subway bike too? on any ttc <laughs> vehicle uh, also go transit vehicles um you know up before we had bike racks you could always do that it's not so easy with the with the doors uh, the new buses it's much easier but uh yeah the uh, the intermodal transit uh in, intermodal transportation which means combining transit and cycling is really important for those longer commutes yeah not everyone lives five to ten kilometers you certainly from their see work. that a lot in in uh, in europe all over the place place. Well, in fact, yeah. I've biked in, in, mm -hmm. in Berlin, the one I quoted with over a thousand, <coughs> and it's true, everything is a bicycle path, uh -huh. plus the fact they have so many trails. The Tiergarten goes through that whole city. Uh, there are a gazillion ways to go from A to B uh, in Berlin, and so many people are on bikes. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think that primarily, though, again, part of that's the culture too. The though, culture you know? and that European cities were built yeah. actually around the uh, around yeah. the pedestrian, whereas North American cities have been built around the car. So everything we're doing right now for cycling yeah. um, is basically remedial. We're going back and trying to adapt uh, a, a, a form of transportation. A gear for cars True. now, but there's only so uh, there's only so far you can go to remediate. When you correct. think, I mean, yeah. you can't you can't stuff cars back into the bottle, as it were. I mean, the cars are here to stay, unfortunately, or fortunately, if we want to get from uh, from A to B. But answer me this: If we have more uh, bicycle designated lanes, does that make cycling safer? I think that. It I mean, it makes it makes cyclists feel better yeah, about it. it has to I be feel better when I'm in the lane, but is it, am I really safer? It needs to be combined with education yeah. as well. It can't just mm -hmm. be the facilities put in place. You also have to educate the drivers, the cyclists, oh, yeah. everyone using yeah. the street, what those mean, where your place is on them, what your rights are coming in and out of them. Um, they really need to create a network as well. They have to be part of a yeah. more a greater cycling infrastructure in Toronto. But Fred, are you safer in one of those lanes? Um, Are there any statistics that would deny that fact or back it up? Uh, currently, no. There's there's a whole wealth of research that still needs to be done on cycling safety, and there's yeah. actually a study going on right now out of UBC. Uh, it's studying Toronto and Vancouver and comparing uh, where the highest rates of cycling collisions happen compared yeah. to the type of roadway and what sort of facilities we have on it. So we're going to have that. So data that'll soon. Yeah, that'll be some data. That'll be some data, won't it? That yeah. we can use to extrapolate certain situations. Exactly. Yeah. But I wanted to mention that the whole uh, issue of safety on our roads is it's a well that whole issue. Oh. I'd like you to hang on sure. to and we'll start up with that 
right after this break. Don't go away.